welcome to my channel. My name is Kiki and it is time to make crafting fun. What we're gonna need, we're gonna need a piece of foam, leftover foam, a circle of the top of our planter and one the size of the bottom of our planter, a planter, any pot will do, a sponge brush, a dowel, I'm using a piece of a mop, how that's called, stick, <laughs> antique wax, burnt umber and the mix of leftover floral from last year and the year before. A round circle ball, foam ball, <laughs> a, a skewer, yeah, the skewer. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our foam ball. Yeah, now I know the name. <laughs> we're gonna paint our foam ball using the burnt umber. And we're gonna cover completely but you don't have to do such a good coat, you, that's just because if something shows you don't want it to look white, you want it to look brown. And now we let it dry and we're gonna take our dowel and we're gonna stain it using the antique wax. If you like what you see here and you like modern farmhouse, boho decor, couple of silly jokes and seasonal decor, <laughs> subscribe because that's what I do here. <laughs> As you can see, I cannot even remember my words. <laughs> And after you stain it, we're gonna let it dry completely and then we're gonna move on to assembling our topiary. The ball of the topiary, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and using the dowel, I'm just marking the bottom part like that to know where I shouldn't be adding flowers. First, we're gonna take all of our leaves and uh, now that I have them separate, <laughs> I'm gonna start adding my leaves to my bowl and for that I'm cutting a little bit of the stem and then I'm inserting them on my bowl. Yes, just like that. You insert them on the bowl however you want them. This is to your liking. You just go around and try to add as many as you want. This is how it's looking. Now I'm gonna move on to the flowers and for that I'm taking off a little bit of that stem also and adding them all around my foam ball and I'm gonna say foam ball like too many times <laughs> I couldn't remember the name and now I know it <laughs> and then this is how it's looking and now I'm gonna move on to the those are berries <laughs> see you see I don't know what's going on I'm moving on to my berries and I'm adding all the berries to my arrangement just like that and this is how it's looking and now what I'm gonna move on it's to all the embellishments like greenery, the cute pumpkin stem I have. It's a stem, it's a bosch, it's it's something like that. It's a pick. <laughs> and we're gonna start adding all of that to our arrangement like that. Moving around our foam ball so we can get some of that on each and every side. So it looks some sort like cohesive yeah I think that's the best word to describe it now I'm adding the pom-pom thingies and now I'm gonna move on to those berries from last year from Walmart and I'm gonna add, add them on the top on the sides and on the front and I continue playing with it as you can see here remember floral arrangements are to your liking you add whatever you want however you want you just move them around and look for the best place to put them. This is what you like. And now I'm gonna add that pick to the front. I found that last year at Walmart and I love it. And now I'm adding some pine cones all around my arrangement or my topiary ball. Now it's topiary ball, yay! <laughs> and we continue adding. I have a bold spot there and I'm adding a flower and that will be it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach that foam, the smaller one, to the bottom of our planter. And for that I'm adding lots of hot glue in the middle and on the sides and just sticking it there. Now I'm taking my dowel and I'm just poking that dowel in the planter to make an indentation and now I'm gonna add hot glue and glue my dowel. And now I'm just adding the pieces, the leftover pieces of foam all around 
my dowel like that to make it sturdy and also for the floral to have something to grab onto. We're gonna continue adding them and now I'm gonna add the center or the top. <laughs> yeah, the top is not the center. <laughs> the top for our planter and that we are gonna paint it using burnt umber. I'm gonna paint it all around, cover everything up just like that. And we when we <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm thinking too fast, talking too slow. <laughs> And when we have it all painted and dried, like that, yeah, we're gonna start adding our floral. And we're gonna start adding our leaves first, like we did on the top. Our leaves first, and then we're gonna move on to the flowers. So you can see, I'm adding now the flowers. We're gonna add the flowers and after we finish with that, we're gonna start adding all the embellishments we want. You can add anything you have at home. Remember, this is just to reuse all of that fall floral we have from past years, last year, day, be day, 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 no, <laughs> the year before. <laughs> it's not the day before. <laughs> and we're gonna continue adding all of that like that. So you see me here. And I'm adding now some grass over there, a little bit there, and we're gonna continue adding all of those floral. I'm adding cotton also. I'm gonna add some eucalyptus, and I'm gonna add a little bit of greenery over here, and some berries. And when we have all of it full, then we're gonna move on to attaching our topiary to our topiary yes <laughs> to the dowel <laughs> and now i'm adding a little bit more that i have left over and this is how it's looking just like that and now i'm adding my eucalyptus and this one it's a bit hard to cut so if you see me struggling that's why <laughs> and i'm struggling now <laughs> It's gonna take me a while while I cut that, but after I cut it, I'm gonna place it all around my arrangement. This is just playing with flowers. You have to look where you want them, play with them until you achieve the look that you're looking for. There's nothing better than that. There's nothing that works better than that. You just play with them and get them where you want them. And now, I'm just placing my last flowers or eucalyptus playing around with my arrangement so I can move on to attaching my top like that using lots of hot glue and now I'm gonna glue it to the there's mine versus the Pinterest one let me know how I did in the comments below and this is how it's looking as you can see but I remember I have this tray that I made for the spring useful DIY challenge, I think it was spring. And I want to upcycle it to use it for fall and Christmas. And I'm gonna paint that and you would see it. Also, we are gonna use this bottoms of some old martini cups I have, it's broken. <laughs> but we're gonna use those, the bottoms, four of them. One dowel and my favorite DIY things, <laughs> stirring sticks. So let's get started. First, we're gonna grab our tray and we're gonna give it a good coat of orange. I know that's a weird color, but it will work. I can promise you that. After that, we're gonna use our burnt umber and we're gonna distress our tray by giving it an old look. I'm giving it dry brushing and sponging all around. As you can see, I'm dry brushing right now. Now, I'm gonna start sponging some more paint on the edges, and I'm gonna continue this dressing. Now we're gonna spray paint all of that, and we're gonna cut our strips. We need four for the longer sides, like so, and those are the strips that are gonna go up in our tray. And we're gonna need eight of those. 
we continue cutting now I'm cutting the shorter side and we're gonna need four of those to also and after you finish that you cut all the remaining the pieces that go up yeah I don't know the word for that but those are the pieces that go up <laughs> those ones and you need eight of those and that's it for the fun part of assembling our wagon we're gonna need four of this ones longer for the sides like that two and two we're gonna need eight of this ones and two of the steering part for the front part of our wagon those are gonna be there and we're gonna need four of this sides this is a shorter side we're gonna need our painted dowel and this two pieces and this is the handle also we're gonna need our wheels so let's get started first we're gonna take our tray and we're gonna glue our beautiful wheels just like that be careful because they tend to fall apart you have to wrap them <laughs> until they sit now we're making our stand for our handle and continue gluing our wheels just like that we're gonna add the handle to the dowel and we're gonna start start building our crate on our tray just like that I'm just gluing the parts that go up as I told you I don't know the word for those but those are the ones that go up and now we're gonna start adding our sides just like that lots of hot glue just like that front and back first and now I'm taking the one of the side and gluing it to the side and I will go back to the other side and repeat and taking all of the glue strings <laughs> continue adding your sides until you finish just like that creating the crate on top of your beautiful tray and now I'm adding the handle and that's it and this is how it turned out as you can see for this first part is a frame and two stir sticks that will depend the size will depend on the frame that you are using because we're gonna place them like this on our frame and I know yes it's a bit damaged but that's not gonna be seen now as you can see it's old and it's damaged now we're gonna use three popsicle sticks of the super jumbo popsicle sticks and to remove that old and damaged canvas that I had I'm gonna cut the canvas like so and then I'm gonna pull it really hard <laughs> because I have to cut a little bit more and then I pull hard really hard again and after I remove the first piece, as you will see here, the others will come off really nicely and smoothly. Yes, I had to go through a lot for that first piece. <laughs> and now I'm gonna take that frame and I'm gonna add my stir sticks. I'm gonna cut first my popsicle sticks and I'm gonna cut the round edges of those like that. And then I'm gonna cut them in half because I don't have enough of the shorter no smaller not shorter <laughs> the smaller skinnier sticks and now I'm gonna cut one of those pieces in half like that because we're gonna do those crosses to our window and now I'm gonna take that stir stick and I'm gonna add glue to both corners like that and I'm gonna glue it and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna add the longer one like that and yes I'm using eyeballing and apparently my eyeballs aren't straight <laughs> because that was really really crooked <laughs> now that it is nicely glued I'm gonna add the other popsicle stick pieces like that and I'm gonna crisscross them just like that and I'm glue them and I repeat that to the other side and that will be it. If you like modern farmhouse and boho decor and fall decor and seasonal decor and a couple of silly jokes, subscribe because that's what I do here. <laughs>
<laughs> and now I have to remember to clean up the excess and hold them down. <laughs> and we will repeat that and that's how it's looking. We're gonna paint it using this 97 cent black spray paint from Walmart. Yes, I know, black spray paint, that's weird, but hold on and bear with me. <laughs> now we're gonna give it a good coat of white chalk paint. Yes, I know, this seems so crazy, but believe me, this will be really easy to distress a little bit later. So we're gonna give it a good coat of that white chalk paint all around, cover everything that's painted black and that's the front of our window completely, just like that. Cover it completely and then we're gonna move on to distressing our window. So like Budari say from Nemo, Finding Nemo, just keep painting, painting, painting. <laughs> Paint it all around and let it dry. And now that it is all dry, what we're gonna do is, I still have my paintbrush, I don't know why. <laughs> what we're gonna do, as you can see, it's dry. We're gonna start sanding the edges or distressing our piece. And for that, I'm using sandpaper that I found because my sand sponge, I don't know if it's having fun this pandemic or something because I cannot find it. <laughs> so we're gonna distress it really nicely as you see me doing here. The amount of distressing would depend on how you like it and if you don't like to distress, you don't have to. And if you're not going to distress, you don't have to paint it black. So you just paint it white and that will be it. <laughs> and now that I distress it, I'm gonna clean it really nicely. Remove all of that dust. And I'm gonna add, as you know, I don't have a drill. So what I do is I use a screw and I screw it to my piece before adding my eye hooks. So I'm gonna screw that and then unscrew it and add my eye hook over there. Just like that. And then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. Now I have my two eye hooks and I'm gonna take some rope and I'm gonna tie it on top like that, just making two knots. On that rope, we don't have to go too fancy because that won't be heavy at all. So you don't need a really tight knot. You just need a simple knot like that and it will hold it no problem. Now I'm taking two pieces of this buffalo check ribbon and I'm just gonna tie it in the center. You will see me, it's a little bit of a struggle <laughs> and the struggle is real. <laughs> and we're gonna tie it in the center like that together both pieces and as you see me what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend them down so we can start decorating our piece and I'm using my cotton as you see here and that pig and that other one and that other one and some eucalyptus and all of that is from Walmart and florals would depend on what you like I'm adding that one to the back and adding some hot glue so I can glue it and then I'm gonna glue my cotton. As you see me here, I'm just fluffing it and just gluing the pieces of cotton that are a, bit, a little bit loose. And I'm fluffing and gluing this one and I'm gonna add that one to the other side. First, I have to remove the tag. <laughs> and we glue that and we add it and now I'm just gonna take this piece of greenery and I'm gonna add it and we're gonna glue everything together. Now I'm fluffing my pumpkin pig and we're gonna give it a good fluff and after that we're gonna add it over there a little bit more hot glue and that will be it. Now we hot glue everything together and we proceed to tying really nicely our ribbons and we're gonna give it a good knot double knot and we're gonna play with the tails of our ribbon like that and we're gonna cut them and I'm gonna ducktail them so now I'm just ducktailing them adding a little bit of hot glue so we can cover the stems of our picks and adding a little bit of hot glue in the bottom so they stay where I want them and we will end 
a ribbon part of the project. Then we're gonna add some eucalyptus. You can add the eucalyptus, you can leave it out. That depends on your taste and what you want with your arrangement. But I'm adding some pieces of that eucalyptus here and there because I wanted a little bit more greenery on my piece. And after we finish playing with that, we will have a beautiful farmhouse hanging, wall hanging, wall, wall decor, something like that. Wall hanging decor. <laughs> a window decor. <laughs> and that's it. And this is how it turned out, as you can see. For our moss pumpkins, we are going to use this pumpkins from Walmart without the stem. My son kindly deconstructed it and took everything off. <laughs> we are going to use moss, this Spanish moss from Walmart, and twine. Also our hot glue gun. So let's get started. First, we're gonna take our pumpkin and we're gonna add lots of hot glue and then we're gonna glue the moss to the pumpkin. Just like that. I'm using a tray because it's a lot easier and I won't have so much to clean up. And after you do that, you're gonna continue adding glue until you glue all of your moss to your pumpkin. My favorite type of craft and you know it by now, I love gluing stuff to stuff. <laughs> and continue adding hot glue and then we're gonna give it a good trim as you will see now we're gonna give it a good trim so we get to see the bald spots of our pumpkin and so we can add more glue and more moss just like that we continue adding glue and adding moss to our pumpkin we're gonna cover all of it. Now that I have it all of it covered, I'm gonna give it a good trim, just like that, and I'm opening the space where the stem goes. Continue trimming, and now we're gonna take our twine and we're gonna wrap that twine around a couple of times, just like that. We're gonna tie it but not too tight because we want the twine to show those are the divisions of our pumpkin so we need that <laughs> and continue adding your twine until we finish with that when you finish you're gonna get them where they belong and then you're gonna add lots of hot glue to your stem and that will be it now we add a couple of leaves or one, like in my case, and that's it. Your pumpkin is done. How cute. I will be taking off all of this off camera. I will be taking all of this and then I'm turning this into a corner coat. I'm gonna take off this and then I'm showing you what materials we are using. All right, I just taken off everything. As you can see, we ended up with a skeleton of the shape that we wanted. This was the pumpkin and this is the hat. Now, what I'm doing is I'm flipping this like this. And this would be our cornucopia and this would be the place where we would put pumpkins and flowers and some raffia and some leaves and some of these acorns and these pine cones. Now we're changing this and for that we need, I have this Walmart uh, burlap tape. It's a two inches width tape that I will be covering up this part with this tape. For this, I know this have a sticky side, but I will use also glue, my glue gun and glue sticks, Gorilla Glue ones. I have this lace, I don't know if I will be using it, also from Walmart. I have this pumpkins from a bag of pumpkins of Walmart. I DIY this ones with a pack that I bought from eBay and I just painted them and put a stick on top. I have some sunflowers, some leftover leaves, acorns, um, pine cones, and raffia so let's get started we're gonna start by cutting our burlap tape in the middle because we are using just 
half of our burlap tape because it's too wide for our shape. And with that being said, we're going to start here. getting to the top and this is getting smaller and it's getting harder to put my burlap over here. Now we're going to continue and we're going to start twisting it so we can fit, fit it. Now we have the end of our cornucopia done and you would ask what we're going to do here. What we're going to do here is that I have some burlap fabric and I'm cutting some burlap fabric making a braid and putting that braid over here. Let me show you. We're going to get our base first. We're going to take our leaves. What, what we're going to do for our base is that we're cutting some leaves and we're filling this part off with leaves. Because we need a base to start our arrangement. And as you can see, this is all open and we cannot put our flowers or pumpkins over there because it's open and won't get them. So we're cutting our leaves and filling this part with them. And put our braid here and start building our cornucopia. This is just the base. Mm. Our braid isn't looking too good. And for this we can use the whole tape and put it right here as the braid doesn't look that good. We can use our tape and just put it here and I think that's the way we're gonna go. we have our base or glued as you can see here we have it this is how it turned out after we put everything on our base because we're not calling it anymore a pumpkin and a hat okay let's start decorating
And this is how our cornucopia turned out. If you like modern farmhouse vote decor and lots of silly jokes, subscribe because that's what I do here. And hit the thumbs up and share this video with a friend because that really helps to support my channel. Also, go and check me out on my social media so we can be friends over there and have lots and lots of fun together. First, what we're gonna need is this frame I got from my neighbor. She was throwing it away. It was part of a mirror that she got or something like that. And I took it and we're gonna need one dowel, one square dowel, and two smaller pieces. This will depend on the size that you're using as a frame. And I'm gonna use this piece of pipe. You can use PVC pipe or whatever you have at home and spackling. Yes, we are going to spackle this. And now, what we're going to do is we are going to glove up. You know, we need those gloves because the hands, uh, we have to save our hands. We're making them suffer with the hand sanitizer and alcohol. <laughs> and now we're going to start applying our spackling all over our piece. Just like that, just spackle that and Spank it, no, no, no spanking, no spanking. <laughs> Just apply it nicely <laughs> all over your frame like you see me doing here. And we're gonna continue applying it completely until we cover all of our piece. If you like what you see here and you like modern farmhouse, boho decor, a couple of silly jokes, and a little bit of violence, no! <laughs> No spanking, no spanking. <laughs> We're not gonna spank our pieces. <laughs> Remember to subscribe because that's what I do here except for the spanking. <laughs> and now I'm applying my spackling to my pipe. Remember that you can use a PVC pipe. And now I'm just rolling it on top of my piece like that so we can create the bark effect that we are looking for because we are making it look like tree bark and look at that it's looking beautiful over there don't look at that because that we are gonna fix that <laughs> but look at the beautiful sides <laughs> and we're gonna roll it around like that and now we're gonna let it dry completely and I'm gonna paint it spray paint it using this cheap spray paint I found at Walmart. This is how it looks after it's dry. And then we're gonna move on to our tree bark look using paint. And for that, I'm gonna start painting, not completely, just a good coat, like a light coat of burnt umber, as you see me doing here. We want that black to show in some spaces. We don't wanna cover it completely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint it lightly you see here nothing too fancy after we finish with that we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna come back with this rust paint and we're gonna give it a dry brush we're gonna apply a lot less that we did with the burnt umber but we want it to show also just apply it all over without covering all of your black and burnt umber as you see here, we applied it, and now I'm coming back with my hazel knot from Waverly, and this will be a complete dry brushing effect. We need a paper towel, and now we're gonna apply it only to the places that are a little bit dried on our bark, so it can look like tree bark. And after that, we're gonna let that dry brush dry, and we're gonna come back with this ivory color and we're gonna give it a lighter even lighter dry brush and with that we will finish our tree bark look look at that it's just looking like a tree and I just took that from a tree <laughs> no <laughs> you know I didn't <laughs> now I'm gonna take my dowels and I'm gonna stain them using my favorite antique wax you know I love this stuff so I'm gonna stain them and I'm gonna let everything dry overnight so I can come, as I was saying, and I got too inspired, so I can come back and glue our pieces from the center. We're gonna glue that, adding wood glue, 
glue it in the center, add the other one to the side, both of them, glue them really nicely, and then you are gonna let it dry for two hours, more or less, it depends on the glue that you're using. We'll let it dry completely and then come back to assembling our wreath. Add lots of glue. Yeah, that's what I was doing over there. <laughs> and now that it's dry and it's sturdy and it's looking beautiful, we're gonna start with all of those florals that you see there. I got all of them at Walmart. You know, I don't have a Dollar Tree. Yeah, it's so sad. But I got them and I love them. Walmart just brought the most beautiful flowers this fall. And we're gonna start assembling our beautiful swag. And for that, I'm just measuring it out. I'm adding some of the picks that I found and those beautiful velvet picks I found at Walmart. I'm so in love with them. And then we're gonna add some of the smaller picks that you see there to the bottom. And after that, I'm gonna start tying them using some wire. You can use floral wire. I'm just using a wire that I had at home. And then we're gonna bend it and twist it and tie them together like that. And we, when we have them all put together nicely, we are gonna come back so you see that we have a bare spot over there. Cut the excess that's just showing off. <laughs> and then when we cut the excess, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to add and attach. First of all, attach our swag to our window. And for that, I'm just using some pipe cleaners, twisting them around that like you see here. I'm gonna add another one there. And now I'm gonna add some floral to the sides to cover a little bit of that bare spot. And as you can see, I just used one that is in our cold palette, so I'm gonna add one of the neutral one, and the other one was, is gonna be an orange one. So forget that you see me here adding that burnt orange kind of color. <laughs> and now I'm cutting the excess, and I'm gonna add this beautiful pumpkin, lots of hot glue, glue it over there, and then I'm gonna come back with two more pumpkins and a couple, no, just two pine cones. <laughs> no pumpkins, <laughs> couple of pine cones, and I'm gonna add those pine cones, one on the top over there. And as you can see, I'm just gluing to my floral instead of gluing to my wreath because we wanna keep that wreath nice so we can re reuse it and reuse it and reuse it for all the seasons. So, I'm gluing to my florals instead of gluing to my wreath. I'm adding some greenery, I'm adding more pine cones, and after we add all of those pine cones, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to adding our beautiful bow. My mom wants a simple bow over there in that corner, and I'm gonna use this buffalo check ribbon that I got. I finally got some buffalo check ribbon. Yay, I'm so excited. But she wants a simple bow, so not so exciting because I wanted to play with that ribbon. <laughs> I'm just cutting two pieces of the same size, and now you're gonna see me glue them together like that. And I'll glue them together, both of them. And then I'm gonna glue them using the same glue that they have together. Yes, I know, a lot of togetherness <laughs> in that bow. And now I'm just taking a little bit piece of twine and I'm tying them together. And as you will see, I'm strong. No, not, not, that's not true. The twine didn't want it to, to tie as tight as I wanted it. <laughs> and now I'm cutting the axis and I'm gonna fluff it a little bit here and there to see if it's all how I want it. Now I'm gonna cut a long piece of the ribbon, duct tailed it like that, and then I'm gonna attach that to my beautiful bow with a pipe cleaner, a white 
pipe cleaner and that will be it we will take that bow and attach it to our wreath and if you hear some screams those are my neighbors having too much fun the kids are enjoying themselves <laughs> and after i attach that i added a little bit of hot glue and that will be it beautiful and this is how it turned out as you can see First, we're gonna take our steering sticks and we're gonna grab our letters and we're gonna measure that steering stick in half, but not counting the handle part of the steering stick. We're gonna cut them, and as you can see, I'm cutting the steering part or the handle part of the steering stick. We're gonna measure four of those, well, three, <laughs> but we're gonna use four because you will end up with four and now we're gonna hot glue them the letters to the steering sticks in the center just like that we're gonna glue all of them to the steering sticks and then we're gonna clean the excess glue we get I'm using this dowel but you can use whatever you have at hand just be sure to clean up all the excess I'm gonna continue adding my letters to my steering sticks like so and cleaning all the excess glue like that just like that as you can see I'm cleaning the excess and I'm gonna add my M and then we're gonna start painting our beautiful letters cleaning up the excess as I did before and now they're ready to start painting. Now we're gonna take our letters and we're gonna grab our white paint, lots of it, and we're gonna give them a good coat of white paint. Completely, front and back on all the sides of your letter. You need to paint all of it with a good coat. We're not gonna give it more than one coat. One coat it's more than enough. But you have to be sure that it's all covered like I'm doing right now I'm just covering all the edges I'm covering all of it front and back when you have all of them painted like mine's they are white you're gonna grab your caramel color and your brush and you're gonna start dry brushing your letters like that this is to your liking, you can add as much or as little as you want and you can use the burnt umber that I showed you a little bit earlier to make this dry brushing but I decided on the caramel color, I prefer that one and you're gonna give that, that dry brushing effect to all of your letter and the stand like that until you have the color that you want on them and I'm liking the color on that E, so I'm gonna repeat that dry brushing effect on my other letters. So continue painting them, giving them that beautiful effect, just like that. Until everything is dry brushed. You see that I'm adding a little bit more like the E and this is how they look now I'm giving it a little bit more paint and that will be it let me show you how they turned out and this is how it turned out as you can see I'm using a bigger pumpkin as an O we're gonna use two of the long strips or complete strips we're gonna use eight pieces of 12 inches, four pieces of eight and a half inches, six nine inches pieces, and two six inches pieces. So let's get started. First, we're gonna grab our eight and a half inches and two of the 12 inches pieces, and we're gonna start adding those strips to the longer 12 inches like I'm gluing them right now. We are using the long complete sticks for reference. And now I'm cleaning the excess and now after we turn it to the other side, we're gonna glue that, that's the back part of our chair, 
we're gonna glue that to the two long strips or complete steering sticks like that clean up the excess glue and let it dry now we're gonna assemble the seating part of our chair and for that we're gonna use four of the 12 inches and we're gonna glue them together to make the sitting part I was going to use some balsa wood from Walmart but I couldn't find it so I decided I'm gonna use those stirring sticks and they will work perfectly in the end you would see that I'm scratching and keeping it as clean as I can taking off the excess glue because we need a clean surface to, to paint it a little bit later and now we have that part and we're gonna start adding our sides like that lots of hot glue one of the sides lots more hot glue and the other side and we're gonna take the two remaining 12 inches pieces and we're gonna add them or attach them to our sides <laughs> other sides <laughs> and that will form a box just like that and clean off the surface and now we're gonna attach the legs we are using the handle part of our sticks and we're gluing them together like that to make our legs because we are using that part in the chair back part as the legs and we're gonna attach them using lots of hot glue if you want something more sturdy I recommend using maybe hot um, wood glue or E6000 we attach those legs and now after they are dried what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the back part of our chair and we're gonna add the legs to the side later you're gonna see that I'm taking them off because I have to cut a little bit if you glue those legs to the sitting part, you won't have to do what I'm going to do next. If you glue them to that, to the box, you won't have to do this cutting that I made. And I'm taking them off, marking them down and cutting, but you can easily glue them to the box and you won't have this issue that I confronted. <laughs> glue them there remove the excess glue cut the other one and after you cut it you glue it again like that with lots of hot glue attach it and now we're gonna attach back part and I didn't remember that it was just two little pieces and I added lots of hot glue that I won't need <laughs> and as we attach it clean it that's it. now for the painting process we are going to use this classic caramel from apple barrel and the bird umber also from apple barrel we're gonna use a bigger and a smaller brush the smaller one for the paint and the other one for the dry brush we're gonna paint all over our chair using this caramel color from Apple Barrel we're gonna give it a good coat one coat only but all around our chair and I'm showing you how I started the process now I'm gonna finish and then we're gonna give it a dry brush it's finished and now we're gonna take our bigger brush and we're gonna give it good dry brushing effect using our burnt umber you're gonna repeat that all around your chair also until you're satisfied with the dry brush effect as you can see I'm adding a little bit more because I wanted it a little bit more weathered but this is to your liking and this is how it turned out as you can see 
First, we're gonna take some black poster board and I'm gonna cut three pieces of it, of one inch, horizontally. And this is how it's looking. Now I'm cutting the other two and I have my three pieces. And now I'm gonna flip my poster board and I'm gonna cut vertically the other pieces and you're gonna cut as many as you want I have all of those and my three longer ones and now I'm just placing them like that leaving like two inches between them like that and I'm gonna start weaving my pieces just like that and now I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to glue my pieces to that bottom piece I'm sorry I'm not in the frame but I'm gonna show you a little bit better now that I realize that I'm not in the frame <laughs> and now I'm gonna add the glue and you can see I'm adding glue to that first piece and now I'm gonna take another one of those pieces and I'm gonna weave it through let me just add a little bit more hot glue and I'm gonna weave it through those longer pieces horizontal and yeah, I'm weaving it horizontally <laughs> and I'm gonna continue until I finish and now I have them and now I'm just bending the corners or those longer pieces all around so I have like little tab to attach my longer pieces and as you can see I just left the corner one and I took the second one to add that longer piece and I'm gonna continue gluing it all around like that and then when I don't have any more of that piece let me show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna flip it a little bit over add a little bit of hot glue like that attach the other piece and continue adding that to my sides just keep on gluing <laughs> And just keep on gluing until you cover all of your sides. When you finish, you just cut the excess, add a little bit more hot glue, and glue it together. Like that. Now I'm gonna cut two thinner pieces to add to the center of my. That's a tobacco basket. I just forgot <laughs> my tobacco basket. And now I'm just gluing the corners and I'm gonna add a drop of hot glue in the middle after I just glued that one like that and I'm gonna glue another one in the top that piece is like half an inch something like that I didn't measure it but you can measure if you want <laughs> and I'm gonna glue it in the middle and in the corner and that's it we have a tobacco basket now moving on to the fun part we're gonna start dry brushing our tobacco basket and for that I'm using mineral from Waverly chalk paint and what I'm doing you've seen me lots of times doing this I'm just taking a little bit of paint and just brushing it in my napkin to remove the excess and then I come back and I start painting all around not doing an awesome job on it <laughs> But that's the beauty of dry brushing. You don't have to do a beautiful job. It will look beautiful even if you don't do a beautiful job. Yeah, I used to board beautiful a lot. <laughs> and we're going to continue dry brushing all of our beautiful... Yeah, I just did it again. I should add a beautiful count. <laughs> and we're going to continue adding our dry brushing effect to our tobacco basket. <laughs> and continue painting and I'm gonna let you enjoy the painting process now I'm painting the sides and doing the exact same effect After we finish with our dry brushing we're gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come back 
with some floral I found at Walmart. I'm showing you the ones that I'm using. Some wire and a banner. And I'm adding a leaf, black leaf, to that banner because it had a traditional color leaf. And I just painted it and I'm just gluing it back. Now let me show you the cute banner. Okay, now let's make a swag for our tobacco basket. I'm just placing two of those leaves and then I'm taking two of those picks and placing it on top of each other and now I'm just gonna wrap it using my wire all around like that. Just keep on wrapping until you have wrapped everything that you have there like that. Now I'm just gonna add a piece of cardboard, the same we used to make our tobacco basket, in the middle so I have somewhere to place my sunflowers. And now I'm gonna glue that piece to my tobacco basket. Just like that, I'm just folding it so I can add a little bit of hot glue. And now I'm having issues with my hot glue gone. <laughs> And now I'm adding some glue to the top and gluing it and then I'm gonna take the sunflowers and the leaves and I'm gonna glue the leaves to the sunflower just like that. And then I'm gonna take my sunflower and place it where I want it while I glue the other ones. Look at that, it's so cute. And now that I just finished, I'm gonna start gluing my sunflowers to my tobacco basket like that so cute and now we're gonna move on to the banner and for that i tried to wrap it around my basket but i couldn't so what i ended up doing is adding a little bit of hot glue to the sides and gluing it to the outside part of the basket and that will be it we will have a beautiful tobacco basket wreath. Look at that, that banner is beautiful. And this is how it turned out. The barn will be your design length, but I've made 45 degree angles and 22 and a half degree angle. And now I'm showing you a base and some pieces I cut for our roof like that. And we are gonna use a wooden circle and some of those skinny sticks, celery paint, Pumpkin, Waverly, black paint, and deep red. Also, we're gonna use white. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them, all of them, and we're gonna glue them together. And as you can see, I'm using the ones with the 45 degree angle to the corners, and the 22 and a half degrees, I measured that using my miter box. <laughs> we're gonna use them in the center so we can create the shape we're looking for, and if you saw my thumbnail, we're making a barn, a full barn. I'm so excited about this. And we're gonna wipe off the excess glue, and now we're gonna paint it using the deep red. We're gonna paint the front, the back, and the sides, not the bottom, not the top. Those, we're gonna leave it like that. And we're going to continue painting until we have everything covered. Just like that. And we paint it completely like that. And when it's dry, we're going to flip it over and paint the back. Now I'm going to move on to everything that's white and I'm painting my circle and my roof using my white paint and I'm also gonna paint my door but I'm gonna show you how I made my door so we're gonna continue painting until we paint everything white and like that we're gonna paint the front and the back and the sides for those but the circle, just the front and the sides. <laughs> if you like what you see here and you like modern farmhouse and boho decor and seasonal decor, subscribe because that's what I do, especially silly jokes. <laughs> now I'm taking my 
skinny sticks and I'm just cutting my shape for my door and I'm just using a scissor and cutting the excess you can make it as big or as small as you want and now I'm gonna cut the top and the bottom the same size and then I'm gonna cut the excess for my barn door now I'm gonna cut one and I'm gonna leave the other one for when I'm assembling it now we're gonna add hot glue to make our door on the corners like that and now I'm gonna add the X on the back like that and I'm gonna add the other one crisscrossed from the front but hot glue it in the back let me show you you see we crisscross it but in the back gluing it in the back and now we're gonna cut any excess that we have and we're gonna paint it white Paint it completely, really nicely. Don't mind my painted hands, <laughs> but we're gonna paint it completely. And now I got a little bit of that unglued, but I glue it back and I'm gonna attach after I finish and it is dry that to my barn but now I'm gonna paint the base and that's a stir stick also using the celery paint and now we're gonna attach our barn door to our barn for that lots of hot glue stick it there and now we're gonna move on to our ceiling and for that I'm gonna glue the first two pieces the smaller ones like that and then I'm gonna take the bigger ones that those are for the 45 degree angles and I'm gonna glue them there and now after we finish with that we're gonna glue our base and for that hot glue and glue it down let it dry and now we're gonna move on to the best part of our fall farm we're gonna make a sign for the front of our farm and as you can see I'm just handwriting happy and guess what fall <laughs> happy fall like that and we're just gonna paint it until we have what we want and that's happy fall Then we're gonna move on using our pumpkin color and we're gonna move on to making a cute pumpkin on the side. And after we do that, we're gonna start painting some cute leaves all around our sign. And as you can see, I just stamped three times, make a small stamp and stamp with my brush two times. Like that. And we're gonna do that all around our sign and don't worry about the empty spots because we're gonna add other colors to those spots. Repeat that until you have everything with your cute leaves. And now I'm gonna move on to the celery and first I'm gonna paint my pumpkin stem and then after that I'm gonna start doing the same with the celery but I'm not gonna add two other leaves so I'm just doing three leaves like a maple leaf I think that's the name <laughs> and we're gonna add those like that After we finish with that one we're gonna move on to the deep red and for that I'm gonna make one leaf over there and then I'm gonna move on to making dots in between our leaves and that will be it we glue that to our barn and we will have the most beautiful fall decor and now my beautiful barn 
Yes, it's a fall barn. <laughs>